on today's episode of Locked On NFL Draft. To tank or not to tank? Should the Arizona Cardinals tank for Caleb Williams or stand pat and build around Kyler Murray? We're going to tell you next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. I'm a national scout over with the Draft Network, and you can find and follow me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out to y'all for being our every dayers but i gotta kick it over to my guy mr lsu keith sanchez you can find and follow him on twitter at the talent code keep talking to him baby what's up locked on family this is keith sanchez senior draft analyst with the draft network man in 2019 national champ with those lsu tigers man here to bring you that champ talk what I'm talking about me and dp man we're here to bring you that championship level content surrounded the nfl draft 24 7 365 we are the dynamic duo that you tap into everything college football nfl football and we like to always say what it starts with the draft man the nfl draft so dp listen man we have a hell of a slate today man with to tank or not to tank we're talking about the arizona cardinals we're talking about caleb williams on one side we're talking about kyle murray on the other side and we're talking about making a decision right which one are you going with then we're going to get into one of our favorite segments dames dudes and we're finishing the show up with coach k's he thought, and I'm going to let you know now I'm talking about the NFL offenses across the entire NFL. So that's just a sneak peek in what we get into. DP, let's start this thing at the very top, man. We're talking about to tank or not to tank. For Caleb Williams, you have Kyler Murray returning from an injury, right? Supposedly he may come back this year. This Arizona Cardinals team is showing, I guess, fight is the right word, right? Like, like they're they getting off the mat. They're showing fight. They're performing better than what people thought they would. Um, but if you're the general manager, head coach, owner, are you tanking or are you saying, okay, I'm going to ride this thing, thing out with Kyler Murray? Keith, that, that is such a tough – when I thought about this topic myself, when I sent it to you, I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to answer this because it's my idea. And I still don't know how I'm going to answer it, right? Because, yes, you, you get enamored with what, Kyle, with, with, with what Caleb Williams could be, right, and what we've seen at the college level. The big splash plays, all that stuff like that. Now, granted, some of the stuff that he does at college, Kyler Murray has done at a high level in the NFL, right? In a tumultuous, toxic situation. So looking at, for me, I say this, and I'll I put it on wax. I say you don't tank. I say, okay, Kyler Murray comes back, let's say week 10, week 11, week 12, somewhere in that in that realm, right? I, I for First of all, this is why I don't know if they're going to tank. If you activate Kyler Murray and he's healthy and ready to go, he steps into this. He steps as the starter, right? He's the starter. You, you bench Josh Dobbs, which you should because Kyler Murray is the guy that you paid all the money to. So you play yep. Josh, you'll play Kyler Murray. You play him. You know Kyler Murray is going to try and play his best ball because if he can win three or four games down the stretch, what does that do, Keith? There's no Caleb Williams. You can't get him because you're not in the way, right? Who was it that – uh? I can't remember the quarterback that the reason why the Jets, um, the reason why the Jets didn't get Trevor Lawrence, they won that one oh, final game. Yeah, man. I can't remember that? the quarterback's name, but it was remember. like, you know, it was just him sticking it to the Jets. Nah, y'all want to tank? You ain't gonna get the best quarterback in the class. You're gonna get probably the fifth guy, truthfully. But you know, at the end of the day, I think with with, with Kyler Murray, you know, you look at what Josh Dobbs is doing in this offense, man. You know, he's running it efficiently. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions, 100, uh, 814 yards, 70% completion. This offense seems more pro style, more QB. Even though the air raid is quote unquote QB friendly, this offense seems more suited to give you real looks. I did not like the stuff Cliff Kingsbury was running. Kyler, did, I'm telling you, you, go back and watch some of those games when Cliff will make calls in key moments. You can see the disgust on Kyler Murray's face. Like, why are you calling this? Of all things, why are you calling this? You know what it I'm was saying? Definitely so, one of the I more publicized 
quarterback, head coach, dysfunctional, dysfunctional. on TV relationships where it was clear that the quarterback did not like what the head coach was doing. Um, and, and even you had that little spat. I remember when I, I forgot what it was where he kind of let Kyler Murray call plays and then preseason you know, and then Kyler Murray's kind of looking at him like, yeah, this is how you do this. Like, this is how you call no, because he made the like, comment, or oh, you know, basically like everything ain't sweet over here, big fella. Meanwhile, yeah. Kyler, t- Kyler takes over play call in the second half of that game, and that's when they score. <laughs> they didn't score the whole first half when Cliff was calling plays. So I think I think you keep Kyler, the arm talent, the athleticism, the playmaking ability, and now you put him in a structured offense with a run game with James Conner uh, being able to run the ball. Josh Dobbs is the second leading rush on this team. You know Caleb could do – I mean, not Caleb, but Caleb could do the same thing, but also Kyler. But then you have a big body receiver that we talked about yesterday's part, Michael Wilson. Um, you know, you have a healthy Hollywood Brown who is like his best friend. I just want to see what this offense looks like with a healthy, motivated Kyler Murray. And from everything I've heard, he is a much better teammate now. You know what I mean? With this new coaching staff, he's a, he's very attached to the team. Everything, every, There's nothing negative coming out of there. So I say you stick with Kyler, man. You paid him. He's a really ta- – this isn't a Josh Rosen situation where the talent clearly isn't there and he doesn't love football. Like – Kyler's talented. He could do the same things that Caleb can. He's he's actually proved it at the NFL level. Yeah. So DP, when you presented this question, there's the there, there, it's a layered question, right? Because there, there's multiple ways you can look at this, and that's and that's the, the first thing is this that Kyler Murray got it done in the NFL, and Caleb Williams is getting it done in college right now, and we're projecting him to the NFL, right? So it's kind of the conversation of. The the bird, I don't remember the bird in a bush is bird in a hand is better than one in a bush, or however you say it, right? It's basically oh, what's what's proven versus what's unproven, right? And Kyler Murray has been proven in the NFL. And I know people will be like, oh well, he's proven what that he's just bad. And it's like it, the numbers are not actually bad, right? This is a guy that that obviously got hurt in 2022, right? Towards ACL, but you look at the 2020 season, right? You're talking about 3,900 yards passing talking about 26 touchdowns, but then this is the other thing, right? You're talking about his running ability. He had 11 rushing touchdowns, right, for another 800 yards. So you're talking about he accounted for almost 5,000 yards between his arm and his running ability and 37 touchdowns, right, between throwing a football and running a football. 2021, very similar, right? He threw for another 3,700 yards, 24 touchdowns, um, and another five on the ground. So that's almost 30 touchdowns, right, and another – 400 yards rushing. So I agree with you, DP. And then let's be completely honest about this too, about this, that the Cardinals have never been a, a well-rounded team, right? Like so mm-hmm. even with Kyler Murray, and they wasn't a well-rounded team even in 2021, right? It, it was not a well-rounded situation. So um, if you take those high draft picks, right, and then now you're able to get them, potentially you go get Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you go get another offensive lineman, right? And then and then in the second round, now you can draft another running back. You come up with a Trevian Henderson or something like that to complement James Conner. Now you got a young nucleus to roll, right? And now your quarterback is the veteran, and he can mold those young guys into being what he needs them to be, right? Now you're talking about having real offensive weapons um, at every layer. So the, the conversation, DP, to, to tank or not, I wouldn't tank just because I find it extremely difficult. I think it's difficult in the NFL to tank anyway, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's extremely difficult to do. Um, but also, somewhat like the Cardinals, you need a culture set, right? Like, and, and it's not all bad right now. You're trying to turn that thing around because this is the other part, that if you tank right now, then you're kind of leaving your head coach in position to kind of get fired, right, mm-hmm. after, after one year because who knows what's going on. And you know what I'm saying? And he hasn't played inspired football. Yeah, and he hasn't played inspired football. So I, w- I would have to look into all of that. But as of now, DP, to answer your question, no, I, I would not tank. I'm-, I'm still going out there. I'm going to play football because I'm trying to see. And all- this is the other thing. You have a young roster, right? You drafted guys like B.J. Ajilari, Keith Keitrell Clark, right? Um, You're trying to figure out who your ballers are. You don't figure that out by tanking and setting the culture up from week to week. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and lose these games. And, you know, you, you just can't figure out who the dudes are. I, I agree with that, Keith. Uh, my final thing is like, uh, you know, as much as Caleb is a baller, man, I, like I said, I want to see a fully healthy Kyler Murray in this offense that's structured, that seems to be more well rounded, right? That's so going to give him efficient looks and efficient reads to where he could fully. 
play quarterback and not have to put all the weight on his shoulders like he had to do in that air raid offense with poor play calling by Cliff Kingsbury. I think this young man is going to be motivated to come out there and play. Let's see what that looks like because if they win three or four games and you're out of that, that Caleb Williams package, it's not a bad thing in my opinion. Yeah, no, nah, I agree. Not a bad thing. DP, you know, it's not a bad thing whenever you have a Dames Dude segment coming up. When Keith gets to put the pressure on DP, we get to ask who's in the club, who's out the club. So coming up next, man, I'm going to tell you right now, DP, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. I got five guys. So get ready. I have five guys I'm going to ask you about. Are they in Dames Dude's club or are they on the outside looking in? Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft, a daily draft, or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that you are guaranteed to have to fit on your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. New York Jets running back Brees Hall has had a tough season so far with his limited usage, but his explosive 56-yard rushing game on only six carries against the Kansas City Chiefs in Week 4 is a great foreshadowing for his best game of the season when the Jets blow through Denver in Week 5. Look for Hall to fly a mile high with his speed and explosiveness. The Broncos defense is falling apart against the run, especially versus faster backs. Expect Hall to go off to help the Jets try to get a much needed road win. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship and eBay knows, eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one, ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guarantee Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Listen, if it doesn't fit those times, if it doesn't fit the first time, the second time, or whatever, you're guaranteed to get your money back. Plus, at these prices, at these prices, guys, you're burning more rubber than you are cash. So, I'm telling you now, you need to invest in eBay Motors, okay? So, keep your number one ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Time for Dame's dudes, guys. Keith said he's about to put me back in the hot seat for another week. Let's get it popping, Keith. DP, let's go. We're going to Oregon, man. We're going to the West Coast. We're going to Oregon. They have another playmaker. We talked about the wide receiver recently, but I didn't get to know how much you liked him, right? I kind of spoke about him putting him in my mouth draft to the Buffalo Bills, talking about wide receiver Troy Franklin. Is he a Dame's dude or not? Oh no, he's a dames dude, man. I, I really like his game, Keith. The, the the speed, the ball tracking ability. He's tough. He plays with a little bit of swag to him as well, and everything, man. I think that this is a guy that can beat man to man coverage, soft man. I think he can handle press coverage pretty decently as well. And if you give him free releases, listen. If he's even, he's leaving. He's that type of speed threat down the field. So absolutely, he's in. He's in the club. I rock with Troy Franklin heavy. Yeah, I I, I think he's a guy that's going to continue to elevate throughout the process. Um, you know, just the season, Oregon's going to play well. I think they're going to continue to play well. I think they, they may be first or second in the Pac-12 for me as far as just talent from top to bottom. And then when you look at how I expect him to test, right, and then when people actually jump into the film, I think it, yeah. there, there's going to be a lot said for Troy Franklin. So I agree with you. Um, Troy Franklin, arrows all the way up. DP, next up, man, this is a this is a Bayou Bingo, right? The LSU Tiger that's jumping onto the scene, man. Brian Thomas, wide receiver from LSU. Brian Thomas, if you haven't heard of him, go check him out, man, because he's on a, a tear right now. I think five, six touchdowns in the past um two weeks. I think seven, eight touchdowns over the over the course of the season already. Playing the number two wide receiver, obviously the Malik Neighbors, but DP Brian Thomas, six three, six four, um, two hundred pounds, man. Is he a dames dude or not? Oh yeah, he's a dames dude, Keith. You know what I mean? When I turn the when I turn on the games and I'm turning on the tape, I'm always looking for. For, for, for Brian, I want to see what he's doing out there, especially because we know Malik, Malik Neighbor is going to get majority of the attention, right? He's the, the headliner. He's the top guy. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, what can you do when they give you those favorable matchups? Can you win? And the ball skills, I think he's faster than some people. Well, 
I think he's faster than what he looks like being six because he's he's six four, like you said, he's six four, tall, long leg, long frame type of guy with you know good with good arm uh, arm length and wingspan. I he, he's a dame's dude. I'm excited to see how this season finishes out for him because I think that he's a guy. I don't know if he's going to declare, but if I was him. You strike while the iron is hot, baby. And our iron right now is steaming, Keith. Yeah, I agree, because you never know who the quarterback is going to be next year, right? And if we see anything. And I ain't testing that with, opportunity. Right, with Kayshawn Boutte, right? He went from first round, top 10 lot, to what I think he wind up going. Back sixth. Another, yeah, sixth, seventh round, right? So you 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 definitely have to strike while the iron is hot. But DP, let's keep this thing going. Let's keep it flowing. You know what I did? I talked about Brian Thomas. Now I'm about to talk about his quarterback, DP. Jaden Daniels, is he a Dames dude or not? He's tearing it up, right? Like, he, his stats are tremendous. He is comparable to a lot of the Heisman contenders, but there's still a conversation of him throwing the football, right? Like, I'm, I'm not talking about the college prospect, the NFL prospect. Is he a Dames dude or not? Yeah, Keith, he, he's a Dames dude for me, man. I, I really like what I've seen from him. Um, I think we talked about it on, I believe it was, was it Monday? I think one of the most recent pods I we talked about, yeah, it was Monday. I, and, I, and I said, I think in, in the draft scenarios, I put him to the New England Patriots, right? And for me, it's like, even though he's a kind of thin frame guy, I see the arm talent to be able to drive throws, to push the ball down the field, but he showed the ability to layer the football, throw the, the, those slot fades or those fade, just a fade ball, period. The touch, the placement right over the right shoulder, away from the defenders, things like that's that's high level QB play, man. To be able to drop the ball in the bucket like that, so I think with his arm talent, his athleticism, uh, the the elusiveness that he is as a runner, and then like I said, can be able to make accurate throws at all three levels. And this year, he looks to be more efficient, more in control, and more of a pocket passer. Yeah, no, he's a dames dude. I really like what I seen from him. Them Bayou Bengals, they got some dames dudes in the club. <laughs> but yeah, DP, I, I agree with you. And, and Jaden, I watched them beginning of last year, right? I watched the middle of the season. I watched the end of the season. And, and I, I really seen the growth from him, right? Like, this is a guy that's growing, that's getting more comfortable. Um, Even in – it wasn't this past week. Who did they play? They played Arkansas, right? So they, they mm-hmm. lost to Ole Miss, obviously. But the Arkansas game, and you can kind of see him on the field, but he's talking to the coaches like, I know what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let me check to this. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm seeing. Give me that, right? Like, and so you see the confidence growing from him as a quarterback. The NFL prospect part of it, I'm gonna still jump into that, right? Because I, I, there's still certain things I know right now. We kind of a lot of lot of film that needs to still be watched. As yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Of, yep, it's a lot of film that still needs to be watched. And and we, you know, we talked about the slot fade, com, you know, conversation with him being able to throw that ball and stuff like that. So there's different things that I want to see. But DP. We taking this thing to Clemson up next, right? You text me a little bit, but we didn't have the conversation. And I said, you know what? Let's save it for Dame's dude. And I'm going with look. You, you look nervous. You look a little bit nervous though. If for those just <laughs> I know YouTube. where you're going with this. <laughs> we go with Jeremiah Trotter. We want to talk about Jeremiah Trotter. How do you feel about Jeremiah Trotter? Because quickly we talk about the text real quick. You just, you know you just you were questioning. You had a couple of questions about Jeremiah mm-hmm. Trotter, right? and I like him. But I want to know, is he a Dame's dude or not? Like, where, where, where are you standing with Jeremiah Trotter? What are your concerns? Of, you know, just how do you view him? No, he, he's a he's a Dame's dude. I, I really like his game. Um, I, the, my concerns with him is athleticism, right? And especially in man-to-man coverage. Uh, and I think especially compared to his teammate, right, Barrett Carter. Barrett Carter is a much more hyper-explosive athlete that can cover down the field. He can He runs with receivers tight ends, running backs down the field on vertical routes, but he also can play zones, and he's very good at it. I think with Jeremiah Charlie, he's a traditional, to me, more of a traditional inside middle linebacker, green dot guy, highly intelligent. His football IQ is off the charts, going to be able to, you know, have those back and forth. You know, I ain't, I'm not calling Ray Lewis, but, you know, we've seen the slow-mo of Ray Lewis looking at Peyton, Ray Lewis looking at Tom. You know, they're making their calls. He's talking to his team. That's what Jeremiah Charles is going to be able to do. He's not going to have the athleticism to go kind of like C-gap to C-gap, in my opinion, or play a lot of man-to-man. I think he's a solid athlete. I don't think he's an outstanding one right now, uh, just looking from what I've watched him in these games this year. But he is a dame's dude. I really like his game. Uh, I just think he's going to be pegged more as a true middle linebacker than somebody I want him on the outside covering uh, what hash the sideline, dropping off deep in the coverage, trying to cover routes down the field. 
Well, let's get the people what they want, right? In, in the in the comp, right? And because we we just seen it in this past draft, right? And is it is it the conversation that the middle linebacker, true middle linebackers, are becoming a rarity, right? And mm-hmm. the conversation we go, I'm gonna start it with Jack Campbell, right? Because Jack Campbell was a first round pick, and he's playing well for the Lions. So in the comp, what I want to ask you is this: that we know about the playing in space part, right? But can you see him? And I and I think Jack Campbell's a much bigger person, like just like yeah. taller and he's a little bit heavier. But can you see him being like is his talent level comparable to a, a Jack Campbell S type player playing the middle linebacker position? No, I, I think there's definitely similarities there, Keith. The ability to work downhill, uh, you know, B gap to B cap, being able to flow over the top, right? If you got a sp- uh, 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 a splat and spill, he could be your spill guy to get over the top get, and close the door for cutback lanes and and kind of win that. Like I said, B B gap to B gap, and, and the, the the physical limitation. I think he's a better athlete than Jack Campbell, but the same questions are there for me, right? Where it's like, okay. How much of a, how great of an athlete are you, right? And if we get you in space, can they take advantage of you uh, from that from a space standpoint? And they put you in space, isolate you one on one. Do I have concerns? And I a little bit I do, right? You know, I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? So in terms of man to man coverage, stuff like that, I think they are similar. But like you said, it is a rarity. When you have guys like Jack Campbell and Jeremiah Charter Jr., that can place play the middle linebacker position with so much instinct, so much control. Right and really be the QB of your defense, man. It's a rare trait and it's something that you got to covet. Yeah, DP. You know what I want to do, and and this will be a conversation that we have once we get deep into the draft. That's why I say we we talk draft philosophies and everything, right? Because we talk about middle linebackers being able to cover, right? You know, just just being able to cover uh, people and things like that. But I, I want to know what's the percentages that they're targeted, right? Like in the sense of the fact of. Are we knocking middle linebackers for something that's not that exploited anyway? If you kind of right, kind of right. get what I'm saying, and yeah. and I thought about that when we had the comp when we were texting back and forth on Saturday, and that's just something I don't know, right? I, I just presented that that well, question. It's gonna be fun to you get through the season. We start looking at some of the number. Oh, this is gonna be a fun thing. Yeah, just to kind of talk about it, right? And because I I thought about it with Jack Campbell, right? I, and I I felt the same exact way you felt about Jack Campbell. Was like. Uh, him in space, I don't really know, right? But how many times is he just a, a cover two drop away? He's just sinking into the, to the two hole, right? Like how many times is he just doing that? So that's the conversation. So I think it'll be fun. We'll, we'll dive in that come draft season, right? When we really get into it and get all these prospects and we're going to show, we'll pull up some data, some analytics and really get into that middle linebacker conversation, have a dope conversation. DP, let's wrap this thing up. And we're going to Bama. We're going roll tide. We're going with Dallas Turner, who has been on a tear. Some people, he has jumped back into the first round conversation. Um, I think what five plus sacks already on the season, and we're only in week five, right? So he, he's well on his way to double digit sacks. DP, I want to talk about Dallas Turner. Is he a dames dude or not? Yeah, Dallas Turner's in the club, man. He, he's he's explosive, bendy, uh, good hip. You know, he could drop and sink his hips, get around the end. Uh, he knows how to use his hands as well, Keith. Like, and this year he's closing. Remember last year, you know, coming into the summer, we talked about it. Man, he's getting pressure. He's not closing the deal, right? This year he's closing the deal. Dallas Turner, he gets that stamp of approval, man. He's a baller, and I want to see him continue and have a 10, 12, 13 sack season in college football. Yeah, I I, I think it's it's very possible for him. And um, you know, I'm I was set to tweet this out, man. But watching this Alabama defense, which I watched a couple games yesterday. He, Dallas Turner, and Chris Braswell are becoming the playmakers of this defense, right? Mm-hmm. And they're becoming the guys that's going to have to move this thing forward. They're both veterans, right? They're, they're older guys. The secondary is, is somewhat mixed with young guys. The linebackers is fairly young also, and his interior defensive line position is young. So he and Chris Braswell are having them to step up and be the playmakers, and they are. Chris Braswell had a pick six against Mississippi State and Dallas Turner. Like we said, he's well on his way to double-digit sacks. So, DP, that wraps up Dames Dude. Man, I thought you handled the pressure – Pretty well. I didn't. I don't. I don't think I shook you too much. Uh, you 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 handled it pretty well. You had straightforward. You had straightforward answers. So I appreciate that and I respect it. With DP, it's time to keep it going, keep it flowing, man. We are on our way. We are on our way to Coach K's key thoughts. Like I said, if I slow it down, I don't get the tongue twister part. So <laughs> Coach K's key thought coming up next. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? You talking about brain fog? just clouds of thoughts like, you know, what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't move to do it. Therapy helps you figure these things out. 
It helps you figure out what's holding you back from being the best version of yourself so you can work on yourself instead of working against yourself. Guys, I'm telling you now, you want to go ahead and give therapy a try and better help can absolutely step into that. You want to be the best version of yourself, right? For not just for you, but for your loved ones, whether it's your children, your parents, your spouse, your friends, whoever it may be, you want to be the best version of you for you first and them second. And it's so many benefits that come, come with it. So if you think about starting therapy, guys, give BetterHelp a try. Give it a shot. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. OK, so make your brain your friend with BetterHelp right now. BetterHelp.com. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10 percent off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, Coach K, what is the key thought of the day? DP, uh, I'm watching Monday Night Football, watch Sunday Night Football. Watched a, a what? Well, we have four weeks right of, of NFL football, mm-hmm. and I, there's been a lot of bad football out there, right? So my question is 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 not a thought, but we need a solution, right? Because I'm looking at some of these off. It's, it's been it's been disappointing. It's been disappointing, right? We have obviously the Bills, what they've done of uh, the Dolphins playing well, but when I look at you know teams like the Chargers, right? Then I look at the still is a disappointment. I look at the Browns being a disappointment. I look at the Bengals being a disappointment, right? Then I go to the NFC side, right? And, and you pull up, you look at, who do we have? We have this, the Saints being a disappointment. The Green Bay Packers being a disappointment, right? And so my question is this, offensively, what is the solution to fix this, right? Because we're four weeks in and some of these teams are still looking like they in training camp, right? Some of the offensive blunders that we've seen, it's like, how didn't you figure this out in August, right? And now we're in week four, we into October, and we're still having some of these things. And I know that there are certain fan bases that based off of the roster, there was a lot more expected from these teams, mm-hmm. and it's just not coming through. So there's just been a, a lot of bad football. So my, my thought and my question is, What's the solution? Do you bring back the fourth preseason game, right? Do you do more cross training as far as the the, the, the padded practices with opposing teams, right? What, what is the answer to getting this thing to where it looks fluid? Because I know another part is it's probably affecting people fantasy teams. Everybody's shook right now because it is so sporadic as far as what's going on. So DP, what do do you have a solution of a potential answer to what we're seeing right now in the NFL? Because it's like the the Bengals offense is, is shot right now. Man, it, it, Keith, it's it's tough, man, because I do think, for one, I, I felt like the lack of playing time or, or practice time, right, cutting back practices, cut back padded practices, full speed practices. You no, know, I'm not saying full speed, but you can't hit because then guys get to week one and the quarterback who's not used to getting touched, right, in all of practice, preseason, because he's barely playing, now he's shook after that edge rusher gets a clean shot at him and, and takes him down. He's like, hold up, man. Y'all ain't supposed to be able to hit me? Like, bro, this is not practice no more. Like, these are real games now. You are going to get hit, you know? So it's, I think that plays a part. So I would like to see them. You know, I know the players, I think they're at the CBA. Like, they negotiated that, right? But I think that that's something we need to get back to. Get back to some of this kind of old school stuff. Like, bro, y'all need to get hit again. You know what I mean? Like you got receivers not getting not used to dealing with physicality in the routes and getting, you know, banged up, you know, trying to, to make a, a, a contested catch. Yeah, 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 you probably need to go to the ground and get hit a little bit more in practice. That, that might help. You know what I mean? Because your body gets used to it and you 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 fight through that. Right. Because it's like, OK, I'm, I'm used to this. It shouldn't be a OK week one. I got I got to shake the cobwebs off. No, the, the cobwebs need to be shaken off, you know, in, in August and everything else, man. So I think that's a big part. And then also, like, I'm going to say this, Keith, run the ball. I, 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 what I mean by run the ball is that <laughs> you need to, 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 to focus on being balanced, right? I, I always say this. The Bengals are never a team that, that's truly balanced, right? Like, he, they, 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 they rely on Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, all that stuff, right? But Joe Mixon is a really good running back. Like, run the ball. Him, uh, Chase Brown. Whoever else you got, run the ball, get become more balanced, get the play action. I always talk about changing the numbers, change the look. Defenses are show. I always talk about this, man. Defenses are so willing and, and ready to show a quarterback. Man, look at this nice Hawaiian island that you see pre-snap. All right, now look at hell when we go to pro-snap coverage, right? They want to change the picture. 
So you force them to you force them to change the picture into what you want to see. And you show, okay, I want single high. How do you get single high, Keith? Running the football, forcing the safety down, pulling them down. But if you just throw the ball 45 times a game, they're gonna stand too high. They might roll down to cover one, cover one, or cover three to try and rob you in the middle of the field. If that's what you're attacking. But I just feel like the run game isn't enough. Like you got the Titans who run it way too much, right? And you got other teams who don't run it enough. So I just think that more balance could help. Yeah, uh, man, it's, it's just because, like, you finish that Monday night football game, right, and and you look at it. And, and this is the other thing, that preseason games, right, the Giants look really good, right? And there's a couple teams that look really good in preseason. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, man, this team could be explosive, right? Then we get to regular season, and the offensive coordinators are kind of looking like they're, 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 they're going through a whirlwind, right? Like, they, they, they're they they're shook right now. Um, and, and it's because th- this is the thing that to be able to undo it, now you have to start trying different things, right? Because mm-hmm. obviously you're four or five weeks in, it's like, this is not working. So now we have right. to try different things, but now you're experimenting during the season. You would have liked to experiment in fall camp, right? That's the place where you throw stuff out there and you see, hey, if my quarterback can do this or not, can my O-line hold up or not? Can my wide receiver separate or not? But we having these blatant conversations Right, that's like with issues that should have been blatant, but it's like why hasn't why wasn't it blatant, right? And, and I think mm-hmm. that's that was my thought, DP. That we need to figure this out because we've waited, we've waited eight months to get back to NFL football, and, and it I've don't probably, look good. Yeah, I've probably seen a handful of games, DP, that have turned out. I was like, that was some really good football going on there. So uh, that 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 was my thought for the year. And obviously, we know the NFL. Hopefully, they figure this thing out, and and you know they'll start flexing some games, primetime games, and things like that. And hopefully, these teams start to hit their stride. It's just that I don't want to wait four or five weeks to start seeing really good football, right? I like we, it's one of those things like we want it and we want it now, right? We want good right. football right now, <laughs> DP. So DP, man, that wraps up another show. Speaking of good things, right? I think we got a good thing going on over here, man. We are rolling, we are flowing, man. Into week five right tomorrow y'all make sure we're tapping because we have another great episode tomorrow i want to say like i always say what shout out to our everydayers man thank you for tapping in man you see our twitter handles man with twitter slash x whatever they want to call it man you can find me at the talent code on twitter slash x you can find dp at dp underscore nfl man talk to us because we talk back and like once again shout out to our everydayers Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube. Wherever you listen to podcasts, get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. On tomorrow, it is Thursday night football preview. We have those lowly Chicago Bears trying to get their first win against a team that's coming off of two straight losses, the Washington Commanders. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the matchups you need to watch, the storylines of this game, and then we're going to pick the game, right? Are we going to stay undefeated on Thursday night football? We'll talk about all that tomorrow, guys. But like we always say, Talk to us because we do talk back. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.